Officers know from training and experience to approach the house with caution, ready for anything. Admitting the officers, the distraught housewife explains why she called. Her husband has become moody, depressed, sullen, for no apparent reason. He hit her. She is worried, afraid. No, he's not drunk, although he has been drinking a single can of beer. What is wrong with this man? Is he angry? under the influence of narcotics, drunk, or mentally ill. Some of these people are sick, mentally sick. Many people who get into trouble are mentally ill, some caused by the lasting effects of drugs or disease. Some may confuse you, while some may anger or frighten you. They may commit totally irrational acts, which present an immediate danger to themselves and to the lives of others. Fortunately, most mentally ill do not act as many. And sometimes, a needless death. There are those who believe that people are plotting against them. Even strangers have it in for them. The police officer is not expected to be a psychiatrist, but he should be alert for telltale signs which might be symptoms of mental illness. These include any unexplained, irrational, and grossly inappropriate behavior. Sometimes a mentally disturbed person will appear outwardly normal until a relatively minor incident triggers a violent reaction. The police officer never knows when he will encounter a mentally ill person. Most people are able to cope with the minor anxiety and guilt ticket. But for this emotionally disturbed woman, a traffic stop is too much pressure for her to handle, and the officer encounters an inappropriate reaction, which indicates possible mental illness. Police officers come into daily contact with people who behave unusually, but grossly irrational behavior, or a big unexplained change in behavior, may indicate mental illness. Often, officers can gain much knowledge from family members, friends, neighbors, and co-workers. A mentally ill person may have hallucinations or be terribly afraid. To this man who thinks that someone or something is outside trying to get him and that his room is being bombarded with invisible rays, his fears are very real. It does no good to tell him it's just his imagination. He believes these things are really happening and honestly feeling threatened, it is understandable that he might take desperate, dangerous, and even deadly measures to protect himself. <laughs> Handling the mentally disturbed person is not easy, and it can be dangerous. Always using discretion and good judgment, the police officer must do three things simultaneously. 
He must protect the public, safeguard his own life, and handle the mentally disturbed person as a sick person. Hallucinations are very real to persons who believe they have godlike powers. This young man actually believes he can command the building to collapse on his tormentors. Officers should remain alert for his protection as well as their own. When physical restraint is necessary, only sufficient force should be used to restrain the subject. The use of undue force or even authoritarian commands could make the person's condition much worse. Remember, the person is sick, and nothing that he says or does should be taken personally by an understanding professional police officer. Sometimes religious fanaticism can become the focal point in the life of a mentally disturbed person, causing him to see visions, to believe he can accomplish impossible acts. This man believes that airplanes are against the will of God and that he has been commanded by God to prevent the plane from flying. The lives of everyone on the aircraft depend on the proper handling of this delicate situation. Upon arrival, the officer size up the situation. The stewardess can provide valuable information. It is important to learn clearly and completely what is going on rather than plunging quickly into an unknown situation. The officer should take time to formulate a plan. officer talks to the disturbed person and finds out what is bothering him calmly, quietly, and without excitement. He reassures the subject and gives him time to calm down. The officer's attitude is positive, friendly, and helpful. He agrees with the disturbed man and offers to help. The officer must move slowly and calmly, be friendly, and never threaten or use a weapon. Use of force may make the person's condition worse. The officers must maintain a calm, professional manner, no matter what the situation. Not all mentally ill persons commit crimes. This man is breaking no law. He feels sure that the conversations of his fellow office workers, and even strangers, are about him. He can be very dangerous to anyone who approaches him in an abrupt or overbearing manner. He believes that everyone is conspiring against him. And to him, those beliefs are very real and vivid. If his delusions center on a specific person, the result could be a homicidal attack. Some other forms of mental illness are less dangerous to other persons but can be extremely distressing to the disturbed person. This woman believes that her heart is missing and that her nose is growing. It would do no good to explain away her complaints as imaginary. To her, the pain and fear 
are as excruciating and real as if her imagined ailments actually exist. Sympathetic understanding must be used in referring this lady's situation to an appropriate resource agency for treatment. This lady is not committing a crime, but for her own protection, she must be returned to the rest home from which she has wandered. She is senile. Her thoughts and reactions are similar to those of a small child. She is not sure where she lives, and she may believe she is walking to some faraway city such as London or Paris. Just as a little girl treasures her favorite doll, this lady clings to her most valuable possession, her bird in its cage. Slowly, kindly, and with understanding, the officer uses the birdcage as a lure to persuade the lady that it would be best to ride in the police car, and her return to the rest home is only moments away. Nearly all who attempt suicide have given some warning in advance. Those who try and fail often try again and again until they succeed. All suicide attempts should be taken seriously. On the surface, some may appear to be attempts to gain sympathy. In reality, they are telltale signs of trouble. Every sincere suicide attempt indicates mental illness and should receive professional attention. Some mentally disturbed persons give no sign or warning that they are about to become violent. Taken by surprise, these well-trained officers instantly realize that their family dispute call is actually a mentally ill person. While they take immediate steps to subdue the man, they use only that force necessary to restrain him, and they immediately start to calm and reassure him. Even as they struggle to protect themselves and the mental case, the officers firmly but gently calm and pacify the man, talking him into relaxation with a kind and friendly attitude. State and local laws and regulations governing the commitment and referral of mental cases vary in different parts of the country. However, every officer should be familiar with the symptoms of mental illness and with the mental health resources for diagnosis and treatment within his community, county, or region. To summarize, mentally ill persons are sick and should be treated as sick persons. Officers should use a patient, calm, friendly approach and apply no more restraints than are necessary with a mentally ill subject. All suicide attempts must be taken seriously. The more an officer knows about mental illness, the better equipped he is to understand and handle the diverse problems he will confront in the field. With the ability to recognize symptoms of mental illness, combined with sympathetic understanding and proper handling of mentally disturbed persons, today's highly trained professional police officer is much better equipped to protect her, the citizens who make up his community. Thank you.